Hello, my fellow modelers, my YouTubers, my James Webbers, and Modest Speaking here back in the model room. I wanted to show you what I did so far for the tree of parts of the James Webb Space Telescope from Hoo-Ha Designs. Their JWST model, as beautiful as it is, needed some enhancements. One of the enhancements I've done is by spraying the tree black, as you can see. I did this because a few of the references I have seen of the actual J West, the area where the mirrors are, are, are placed, they usually are black. And I'll show you some pictures of that in just a few moments. The original tree was painted silver, which is great for the solar arrays, the panels, as well as the sun shield, but the rest should be painted black. So what I used then is this Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer. I'll show that to you right now. And uh, all I did was use that Rust-Oleum. Like I said, Painter's Touch. It's a paint and primer. It's a black semi-gloss. Uh, says down below that it used for wood, metal, plastic, and much more. Da 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 da. Sprayed it on twice, gave it two coats on both sides. Then, once I was finished, then I used the same brand, but this time I used a matte clear to keep the paint from uh, being scratched off, from fading, whatever the case may be. And it gives it a pretty decent sheen of a matte clear. Again, for wood, metal, plastic. I'll leave that information on the description. But my concern was that I was gonna—I was a bit afraid of covering up the detail from this uh, kit. The detail on this Huha kit came out very well. As you can see, part of the radiator, the instrument of the ISM-IM, the integrated science module there came out very nice some of the detail as well of the radiator the back shield and everything else came out pretty nice I was quite pleased and on the flip side uh, not the detail side but the covers came out pretty good I was quite pleased on how well the paint actually came out So now that I've got it painted, I painted it a couple days ago, let it dry, let it set. Uh, the paint actually performed very well. It's now time for me to start building. Again, for doing this build, you need a sharp X-Acto knife, some white glue. Uh, I'm going to try using maybe a hot glue gun and uh, my carpenter square, my little miniature carpenter square that I use for my model builds. And I'll be showing you step by step pretty much uh, how to build at least the ISIM, get that started, get that built up, and show you how that looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this video in stills, in pictures, so hopefully you'll be able to follow along what it is that I do, okay? Okay, to start off, what I would do is I would come by and cut off the primary mirror back frame, the truss that holds all the mirrors. Use that as kind of like your base to put everything down, lay everything flat, get everything squared off. Then I would come by and get the support truss. And they're symmetrical, so there's really no right or left to them. Just that when you paint them, I do want to point out that when you do remove them from the trees they, they're going to leave a little bit of a residue I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that but if you look at the top top edge of it there's a little deformation of where I started to cut it's not a big deal I probably would go over that with a maybe a sharpie I tried using a sharpie once uh, to get this thing painted black sharpie didn't work too well in coverage but little spot marks, I think, will be okay to do. 
Then once you cut the truss, then you would want to come by and cut off the part of the ISIM. Uh, there's like little pieces that were anchoring part of that uh, structure. I just poked those parts out. I don't think it's uh, makes any difference if they're on or off. Uh, but it does leave a little bit of a two-dimensional figure. Not much detail on the other side. Although the back side looks really great. Uh, I think I might want to dress that up a little bit. Make it a little bit more in-depth. And then after that, once you put the trust on and put the ISIM, then the last thing you want to put on is that ISMI roof. The part that's up on top. Even with all the painting that I've done, I've only had to scratch out just a little bit. And again, I would just be very careful when you're removing that paint uh, along the inside portions of that support truss. So that way the ISIM portion, those little tabs that are there, uh, fade in pretty nicely. But the rest of it came in pretty nice. But I also want to show you something uh, once I finish the build. And I'll show that to you in the stills. So hello again, we're looking at the Integrated Science Instrument Module, sorry about that, I misspoke about it earlier, the ISIM. As I was looking at the Joha kit, I was noticing that it was just a 2D dimensional kit, which came around really nice after I spray painted it, as commented earlier, but I wanted to add a little bit more detail on the back end, uh, the instrument section. Now I'm not too sure if this is correct or not, but I came by and I just fiddled around with some greebies, which for most of you modelers are just like extra pieces of kits, former kits that you had, and just slap them together. Kind of like you would see in the Star Wars movies, you know, you see the Star Destroyer, or you see some rebel fighter, and you'll see like these weird panels or instruments or components and those are just referred to as greebies they're just pieces of a model that just slap on oh it looks good there it looks great there and I pretty much did the same thing with the ISIM as so I'm panning around I came by and I added a couple of white thickened evergreen sheets just cut to more or less into a uniform shape. The rest of it is basically a touch and go of a couple of pieces that I had laying around of my former aircraft carriers and just putting those things together to make what looked like the instruments that are found in the back of the ISIM. Also included, or strangely, as I move my thumb out of the way, a couple of pieces in the middle there. Now those pieces are the pieces that I broke off, removed actually, from the original kit. Um, they were just like part of the detail that can be removed and I think they look pretty good added on as you'll see in my stills. But all it is is just a bunch of greebies just slapped together to the back end. I measured it out. It does fit. I'll give you more about that in the description towards the end of this video. And modest again, 
So after letting it sit overnight, uh, letting the glue dry, letting everything sit, I just want to show you the ISIM. Came up really nice, I think, with the extra greebies that I put on there, that I installed on there. As you can kind of see inside a little bit. A little bit better view of that. I do want to point out though something that as I was attaching this and kind of doing a dry fit. If you notice those tabs that are sticking out uh, forward of the truss, the truss where the mirrors will be located. That is important. Do not, don't cut those off. If you cut those off, you will not be able to place the mirror. Uh, that nice, really reflective, shiny, gold hexagonal set of mirrors for the J West. Uh, those tabs that I showed you there in the stills are needed to actually place the mirror on there. To be honest with you, with all the paint that I've done, uh, the model's coming around really nicely. There really is very little glue that I needed to add on to the J West. I like to refer to it as J West, a lot easier than JWST. Uh, but the J West came, uh, is coming out really nice. But the next major part is going to be the solar, the, excuse me, the sun shade, the sun shield. That one is going to be pretty complex, almost as complex as the original James Webb State Space Telescope. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys, and hopefully you'll comment on this part, part two of the Integrated Science Instrument Module, the ISIM. See you soon.